There must be some kind of way out of here Say the joker to the thief There's too much confusion I can't get no relief Very crude standards Well, I think you're partly right, Gary. Um, the physical aspect is there. I, I use an analogy, you're in the ballpark, as in you find someone else that's physically in your ballpark. That's the, that's the kind of deterministic, uh, absolute part of the street. But when you get onto the relative and the subjective, um, the way people are and how they act, their psychology, Gary, actually changes the, their attractiveness to you. If they have the same, physically you could um, be attracted to a Christian fundamentalist. She could have a hot smoking body, but her psychology is not there. So let's take this other girl who's atheist and has the same worldview as you, same body. See, you're going to be obviously attracted to this, this one that has the psychology that's more in line, more in tune with yours. So there is some degree of, of relativism in terms of attractiveness there. Would you not agree? Yeah, but it's still psychology and it's still 90% or whatever going to be based on your arbitrary conditioning. <clears throat> I mean, most of it. And so, yeah, there'll be some component of it that'll be based on your, the character you develop over a lifetime and what you learn to appreciate over a lifetime, some of the reconditioning you do in your life. But most of it's going to be pretty crude and pretty arbitrary. Gary, I want to get on, it, on this topic because it's a big one. It's always going back and forth. Um, on the character, does this character that develops um, from all these conditions you talk about, does this character or persona have free will? Do we have free will? Um, maybe we should define it here, but let's get your position on that. Yeah, well, there's no real, the word freedom is like the word love. It's a made-up word by human beings. It really doesn't mean anything. And I've always, I, I keep trying to get people to define things based on responsibilities. And so freedom's what you have left over when you fulfill your responsibilities. But a brain doesn't have any freedom. There's only, there's only the controlling influences. There, there's no evidence of anything else. And we know what the controlling influences are. They are your natural disposition plus your conditioning plus what you're exposed to in your lifetime. So you have to be educated, you have to be informed, you have to be exposed. And if you're not, you're not going to freely do anything. And if you're creating, you always, you're, I, I, I'm an artist, I mean, I paint. I, I paint because I have a skill, because I've acquired it over through experience. I don't, I don't do it innately or magically. That's not free. I can only do it by what I have learned and what I can observe and what I have associations and connections, programming, I have programming, and I can express that programming, but I can't express anything else but the programming. But isn't, isn't learning reprogramming yourself though? I mean, there's got to be of course some, it, but there's willpower <laughs> involved in that, right? Maybe it's not free, but there is some, uh, you know, impetus or, or say that you can have in the world, you're not just uh, passively programmed. You know, you seek out new programming in order to learn it, don't you? I'm not discounting the word will. Of course, we have a will. Our brain makes decisions all the time. It decides things, okay? It just doesn't choose. It doesn't, it, there isn't some chooser inside of us. No, a will is, is, is manifest based on what programming has dominance. And what programming has dominance is built up through feedback that goes on all the time, every millisecond of our life, that we're conscious. When you say, um, we're learn sorry, sorry. Uh, when you say decide and choose, um, if you look at these, these are very synonymous. Um, how, how are they different for, for, for your eyes, uh, Gary? Because people might say, well, that's the same thing. I mean, how do you really nail it to these people that it's not? In your, in your well, we know, we know software doesn't choose, okay? We know that there's a, a, a method to its madness, okay? There's no accidents taking place. And so that's what I mean by there's, no, there's nothing different in us. We are programmed. There is a script being read in our brain, and there's no magic force that pushes it one way or pushes it another way. But in the case of a computer, though, with software and hardware, there was an outside agent, an intelligent agent, that designed and built the hardware and then programmed the software, right? Well, if you want to call natural selection an intelligent agent, you can go ahead. But we know it's four billion years, Matt. It didn't happen in one day. It, all of a sudden, a pocket, well, pocket watch didn't appear in nature. Right. No, it's an incremental changes. You want to call it intelligent design because you think desire 
and reproductivity is important, well, fine. But to me, it's unintelligent design. It's crude forces. Yes, they made a thinking machine. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that they were intelligent. I, I mean, there, dumb forces. I was dumb thinking, forces can make smart things. Right. No, I was. I was bringing up that example of, of the designer of the computer and the programmer of the software more because of the the analogy to an individual organism, not to evolution as a whole. Because you're saying individual organi organisms are just programmed by their experience and their environment, um, but uh, you know. Of programming implies a programmer. So if we're going to use that metaphor, we've got to look at ourselves as our own programmers. That's the only way we could possibly learn. If we could, we well, we were we were program programmed ourselves. by nature, Matt, for for billions of years, though. So that's nonsense. Well, then, uh, all right, we're programmed to desire. We're programmed to be hungry for certain things, for certain food qualities. We're repulsed by certain smells. I mean, we we have been programmed by nature. And we can augment that with our intelligence, but again, the fight between our psychology and our intelligence is the main battleground. We can intellectually know that we are all equal. Psychologically, we won't be able to feel it. And that's going to take place on a million different levels in our lives. And I, back to human relationships again, it happens in our relationships with people. There's people we might love for who they are personally. But yeah, physically they don't match the standard we need to express that love. This kind of dilemma faces, we're faced with it all the time. Do we make the intelligent choice or do we make the psychologically satisfying choice? Gary, you said um, dumb forces can make smart things, which is probably, I think, a quote that should go down in YouTube history because I think it's, it's excellent because it's, a, it's, it's kind of a champion flag for parents. Two dumb parents can create a smart child. They have the potential to create something better and therefore more fulfilling. So you actually, this statement it, it can be viewed as something, a very um, a positive affirmation for humanity if we can, if we can go that far. Um, now is that a complete distortion of, of your views or <laughs> how do you feel about creating the next well, generation? Well, they can, the, the, the can word is the key word. Yes, they can, but the odds are it's million to one or 10 million to one or 10,000 to one. I mean, what's the odds? So, I mean, obviously we have to invest in probabilities. We can't invest in the, in the lottery sure. ticket. Do you so feel that's how our psychology works. Look at our, look at our civilization. There's a yeah. lot of people out there chasing lottery tickets. Do you feel, Gary, that, um, that you're more ethical, more intelligence than your previous generation. I mean, so perpetuating the human species. Do you think is it can't? I mean, for, from your perspective, do you think it's a good or bad thing to do? Should we just stop it, or just limit it to a few select people? And that brings in all kinds of issues people might criticize you for. Uh, what's your whole position on continuing humanity? Should we do it? Should we do it in limitations? Or what, what's what's your your view on that? Yeah, it's the dilemma. I mean, yeah, we can do the, we can try to do the perfect, the conscious experience thing. We can try to get to the zero in the zero sum game. And I wouldn't blame the human race as they did because they are so obsessed with desire. But I'll say, philosophically, if we're really going to look at the truth, the truth is it's a failure. This can't work. It's a futile experiment. All right, we create need and then we satisfy a small portion of the need we create. So yeah, it can't, we can't do it. And my concern is, it's not just the human race, my concern is the trillions and zillions of creatures out there that are sentient, that are playing out this game in just as real a way as we are in terms of the pain and suffering they're enduring. And so we have to have, whatever our answer is, it has to, it has to include all the other sentient life on this planet. Um, um, talking about sentient life, Gary, I, I wanted to get your perspectives out there on, on uh, eating animals. I mean, what, where is the line for you? What, what, how's your lifestyle? Is it easy to be a vegetarian, vegan? What, I mean, what's your perspective on eating sentience? Well, it's really easy to avoid uh, the bulk of meat products. So, yeah, I mean, I've been a vegetarian for whatever, 30 years, and it's not caused me any problems substantially. Um, ethically, I don't know where to draw lines because we don't exactly know what insects feel. We don't know what clams. I mean, they have a very rudimentary nervous system, so maybe shellfish is okay. Um, it's, it's, those are hard, harder lines to draw. But we know, we know the truth about cows and pigs, and so we should at least be able to draw, take them off the consumable list. Yeah, I think, 
I agree 100 percent right there. Um, Maybe we could uh, segue from this discussion we've been having about all these different facets of biology to a discussion about religion, because um, I'm not really familiar with your your upbringing, Gary, or, or if you were raised religious, if there ever was a point where you did believe in some version of, of the God uh, hypothesis, uh, as Dawkins puts it. <laughs> um, so maybe you could, were you ever, or were you always an atheist, or did you ever believe in something and then came to change your mind? How did your development uh, play out? Many here among us, who through their life was but a joke. 